Hello everyone and welcome back. A couple of months back when I was uh, working on the uh, the gallery section of Hitchman's Victory, I was, I was adding all the, the mouldings that wrap around the uh, the cabins. I promised that I'd make a, a little a video showing how I make the mouldings and I just never got around to it. And so when I first did it, I just used this, this little ruler and I cut loads of little different variations of mouldings and I'll use that and it's pretty much just a case that I used to scrape obviously like a scraper you scrape it down the wood and it forms a moulding but I promise I'd, I'd make a tool and I've been thinking about it myself obviously I can make a better tool one that's easy because that's after a while after doing loads of moulding that's not very nice it's, it gets a little bit sore in your hands so I thought I'd uh, try and uh, make a, a better tool where like a handle so we can uh, to pull it easier and take so much uh, pressure off your hands so so yeah so i'm going to try and do that today so i brought over me a little mini lathe it's been fitted with a little cutting disc and that's obviously so i can cut the uh the little the little grooves into the ruler got a marker pen i'll show you where i use that if you haven't got a little mini lathe you can use one of these dremel tools and you, you just fit these little cutting discs into that and you can bring the uh you kind of put your your ruler in that way and cut it you can cut it that like that but I just it's just a lot easier to actually just get it on this get it on this table and just press it along you have a little bit more control over the depth of the cut so anyway I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing and we'll make a start so I've just drawn this little square this is just gonna represent the uh, Three by three timber that we've been working with today just to make these mouldings out of. And I've divided it up into six, and each one of these lines represents 0.5 of a mil. So when I first started to uh, obviously build the uh, mouldings. I just kind of had a look at some pictures of Victory, looked at the uh, the crown mouldings, and just and tried to just replicate the best you can. Obviously, the cutting tool from just pictures you work with, I've got no plan, so it's kind of like just trying to make it look the best you can by eye. So one of the, obviously one of the first ones, that's pretty much a basic moulding. We're just going to use our three by three. It's pretty much just like a staggered, just a staggered cut. All you do then is all you're removing this material. And you get a little bit of a like a stepped step moulding. And that's one of the easiest ones to do. And uh, it looks hundred times better than just putting a plain piece of uh, freebie one on, on the side of victory. And then as you get better, then you can just start to get a bit more creative. And then you can start to like if you got a French curve, that'd be even better. Then you can start to like add some curves into your into your mouldings. So if I were going to do this moulding, I'd, I'd take that out. I'd probably add another step. I'd have another step there, so then I'd take that out. But right at the bottom. I'd actually leave that that part in. Yeah, I'd leave that section in so we'd, we'd have a mould in. It looks like that. And all this has been removed. But what you got to remember is this is only three to three. So if I bring the actual ruler over I'm going to use, That's, this mould is made from that section, so that's how difficult it is. 
So that's what I was saying. When you first start out, one of the easiest ones to do is just a little step one. So I'm just going to use an old ruler. It's, it's 0.8 mil thickness. And all I'm doing first off is going to lay a, another ruler on top. I'm just going to fill in a bit of these blanks. So I'm just going to move it across three mil. section in there that's where I'm going to make the cuts for the molding tool I didn't I mean I've used a permanent marker but ideally we could do a steel a steel marker it would be a lot easier I brought the lathe over the little cutting blade in and why I like these these little rulers for is because each one of them half lines to the bottom of there that's one mil and to the, obviously to the bottom of that black line that's another that makes that three mil so if I Brought this three mil template on. That's the outline. So I know that obviously each one of them cuts is one mil, and each one each little line in between the cuts is 0.5 mil. So for my first cut, I'll bring it all the way down to that first line. Okay, so I'm just making sure I've got my safety glasses on. I'm gonna make this first cut. Okay, so I've just made these three little steps. It don't look like much, but when you start scraping that along a piece of timber, it starts to, uh, yeah, you'll see in a second when I start doing it. But like I say, it's so much easier if you're on a like, precision lathe and you could do it like that, but you I mean, you can get by. And if you're a beginner and you want some more interesting moldings, you can get by just doing it like this. So in my uh, previous videos when I'm making the moldings for the gallery I pretty much just use the molding scraper just on its side, on its, holding it in my hand, holding the piece and just scraping like that. But this time like I say I'm going to try and cut, make a little handle for it. But pretty much all you do now is once you've kind of got this, this cutting profile you can just start to what you want. Yeah, so all I want to do now is just want to make a little handle so that I can hold my pieces in the jig and scrape them that way. So I just cut this little there. Uh, Molly told that we just made and just cut its length. And now I want to kind of fit it in some kind of handle. And ideally, we could do a, a dowel around about 15 mil, but I don't have any at the minute. So I'm going to have to use a 10 mil dowel. But it'll be okay, I'll still get my hands around it. I'll just scrape it with a couple of hands, so I'll probably make it around about. 150 mil long. So 
So now it's going to divide it into the centre line, 75 mil. Now it's going to put this, this cutted piece we just had, and now it's going to draw a line either side. And now it's going to cut another slot, but only halfway deep. After just finishing off, finishing off the handle, I've just mixed up a little bit of two parts epoxy. I'm just going to bring, bring these sections together. You want it so obviously all the profiles are sticking out below. And I'll just glue it on a little bit more glue just to like a, a front face plate. Just so we can add a little bit more security when we draw and it don't break the blade out. Just check the position. In the, uh, in the vise to dry a good half an hour. So it's uh, Friday morning now. I decided to leave this drying overnight. It's not like it needs a drying overnight but once I'd apply this epoxy resin obviously just smelling the uh, the room's quite bad so I kind of vacated the area for an hour and I thought well, I'll come back in the uh, in the morning and finish it. So as you can see it's uh, it's fully it's fully dry now it's fully cured. I had an extra support bar in just for a little bit more uh, a little bit more strength. But like I say, it's up to you now what you do with this. You, if you wanted to, you can obviously paint paint these bits that's sticking out, make it look a little bit more attractive. But just because it's a working tool, I'll pretty much just leave it like that. So, okay, so on for a demonstration. Okay, so I've brought my material over. This is just a couple of pieces that have been glued together. I actually started cutting. <laughs> The, uh, the profile for I actually realised that I'd not pressed play on the, on the camera so sorry about that but it's pretty much the same procedure I'll just load it in the vise I say ideally you'd be better off with a carpenter's vise one that's fixed at the side of the table because this is even though it's it's the good vise it's still a lot of play so but we can kind of once you get your moulding tool yeah I'm not going to have to test on all of this and you just start to scrape down your piece of wood with your moulding tool. And what it starts to do, it starts to cut this profile that you put into your, you cut into your little blade. 
and you start to transfer it over to the part. Yeah, like I say, this is this is working exactly how I wanted it to. But this, this is this is the part that's failing me. Not the tool. And same again. It's a labour of love. I mean, they, they don't. They don't. It's not like I'm using a machine. It's not like I'm gonna rip them. Rip me moulding onto it in in ten seconds, and that's done. It's uh, you just got to keep working it backwards and forwards. But obviously, the rewards when you get to put these on your on the side of your ship, or when you, when you need a moulding, obviously, it's really going to pay you back for this time you're spending now. Can you see that on the camera? I'm starting to put that little step down. So once you've cut your, your moulding into this piece of wood, ideally, if you've got the tool, you'd be best off on a little uh, mini, uh, mini table saw. And just want to set the fence for two mil and pass it down, and cut two, three mil, sorry, pass it down and cut off your moulding. But obviously, because I have a little, little table should saw at the minute, I'm just going to have to just cut it off. Doesn't like water or anything else. Wherever you start the uh, your moulding and where you finish the moulding, you always get a little bit of just, uh, obviously waste. I'll just chop that off. So there we have this small little section of dexter moulding. I'm just going to bring two identical sized pieces across and you can hopefully you can really see the difference just want a little bit of time and a little tool that you can knock up how difference it makes okay so that pretty much wraps it up for today's video kind of quite happy i made this like I say going forward in a few years time I'm hoping that I can get like a nice precision lathe that I can make these a lot more accurate and a lot a lot more you know when you can study pictures and then you can kind of make these tools as accurate as possible like but in a minute for these like these practice builds which victory is it's pretty much just a practice build for me I can pretty much just get away add some more interest to uh, to the victory and like I said it's just all about honing your own skills so anyway Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and I'll see you all next time.